Hello, today let's solve this contour integral. This is a generalized problem, and the original problem is here. This method was suggested by the audience, digxx, and thank you so much for sharing this method. And here I put a screenshot for that comment. This generating function method is so powerful, and we can use this method to solve this general case with the power n on the numerator. So let's get started. We will work on the complex plane. So here we use c as a variable instead of x. The idea is we construct a function h, which is here. And h is a function of a. And here we require a is between negative 1 and 3. Maybe you want to ask why we require a is inside this interval. And I will show you the reason later. And then we do the derivative on the function h. And note here, this derivative is respect to the variable a, so we treat z as constant. Because a is on the power index, so after taking the derivative, we got a log z term on the numerator. And then we set a equals to 0, so we got here. If you compare it with the original problem, here, this integral is corresponding to the case when n equals to 1. And then we take the second derivative to the function h. After taking the derivative respect to a, and then we got the log z square term on the numerator. And next, we set a equals to 0, so we got here. And this integral is corresponding to the case when n equals to 2. So keep going. If we take the nth derivative to the function h, then we got the log z to the power n on the numerator. After we set a equals to 0, we got this integral, which is our original problem. So the key is to calculate the integral for h. As long as we got the function h, then we just do the derivative and set a equals to 0, so we are done. This part has been covered in my previous video. And you can click here to see the details. And I just quickly go through it. And here we try to find the poles for the integrand function. So we set the denominator equals to 0. And then we factorize it into two quadratic equations. And then we found the four roots here. And I mark them on the complex plane. So the denominator can be written into this form. Now let's look at this integral. So first, we draw this semicircle contour here. This contour includes four parts, C1, C2, C3, and C4. And then we take a branch cut on the negative imaginary axis. So here we choose a principal branch from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And from the Cauchy residue theorem, we can write this contour integral into this form. And for the integral on c1, we can write it into this way. For integral on c2 and c4, by doing some analysis, we can show both of them are zeros. And it's very similar to the analysis in my previous video. And you can clear here to see the details. Here, I only list the key results for these two integrals. On c2, we know the absolute value of this integral is less or equal to the integral on the absolute value of this function. So by doing the similar analysis in my previous video, we can find the upper bound for this integral, which is here. The capital R is the radius of this big circle. Because a is less than 3, when the radius r approaches to infinity, this upper bound goes to 0, so this integral goes to 0. And then for the integral on c4, we follow the similar steps. And finally, we can find the upper bound, which is here. This little r is the radius of this small circle. Because a is greater than minus 1, that means a plus 1 is greater than 0. So it's some positive numbers. So when the little r approaches to 0, this upper bound goes to 0. So the integral goes to 0. And you can see the reason why we require a is between minus 1 and 3. Because when a is inside this interval, it guarantees these two integrals vanish. Now let's go back to look at the integral on c3. 
because this is a definite integral, so we are free to choose the integration variable. So here I choose t as the integration variable. And note for the integral limit here, it goes from negative infinity to zero. And then we make a substitution. We let t equals to minus z. After plugging the substitution, we got here. And note for the lower limit, it's converted from negative infinity to infinity. For the denominator, we expand the power. e to the 2 pi i equals to 1, and e to the 4 pi i is also equal to 1, so we got here. For the numerator, we also expand the power. After we plug in the simplified results for the numerator and the denominator, we got here. And then we use this minus sign to flip the lower and upper limit. I copy the results here. And next, we plug in the results for these four integrals. For the left-hand side, we can group them into a single integral. And then we take this green factor out of the integral. And record the definition for our function h. So for the integral inside this purple box, it's just our function h. And then we replace it with the function h, so we got here. And next, we divide this green term on both sides. In the next slide, I will calculate the residues. So as long as we got the residues, then we are done for the function h. I copy the function here, and the note for the denominator, we can write it into this form. So we plug in the factorization, then we got here. Because z1 is a simple pole for this function, so we just calculate the limit. After plugging the function f, we got here. These two terms cancel out. And then we plug in z equals to z1, so we got here. And record the four roots. And then we just plug in the four roots and do some algebra to simplify it. So we got the residue on z1. And for the residue on z2, we can calculate it similarly. Here I list the results for the two residues. And then we just take the sum for these two residues. And recall the equation we just derived for the function h. So we plug in the result for the sum of the residues. Now we are done for the function h. And we know for the original problem, this integral equals to the nth derivative of h when a equals to 0. In the next slide, I will calculate the case for n equals to 1 by using this result. I copy it here. So first, we do the derivative to the function h. And then we set a equals to 0. After we set a equals to 0, the right-hand side is reduced here. And then we simplify it. So we got the answer for the case of n equals to 1. And it confirms the result in my previous video. In the last slide, I summarize the results for different value of a, and also for the different power for the log z term on the numerator. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like. That's all for today, and thank you for watching.